Hello, welcome back to the Archoria Synthy V tutorial series. Today we're having a look at everything to do with outputs. There's outputs all over the place on this synthesizer, so let's uh, have a, an overall review of them. The first one to mention is the one at the end, which is the main volume. The reason why the Archoria have implemented this knob, it's not on the original, is because it's completely independent of all other modulation sources. This is the absolute single point of truth for um, audio output from the synth. Nothing can affect it. That's not true of any of the other controls. So stepping backwards, our next uh, output controls are in the bottom left hand corner down here. Now we've got independent levels for channels 1 and 2. So at the moment we've got output channel 1. Simple filtered sound but we can make an even simpler sound by coming straight out of the envelope and directly to the output. So now there's the same oscillator sound with no filter applied and then we can mix those two things together. <laughs> Sounds kind of weird. It sounds particularly weird because they're both currently panned central. So let's pan them hard left and right. That's pretty cool. And then we've got independent level controls for those. I don't need to describe that surely. However, having said I don't need to describe that surely, what I'm now going to do is pull these level controls down a little bit. So the entire thing is quieter and I'm going to take an output from the, uh, the the low frequency oscillator which oscillator 3 is particularly good at and I'm going to plug that into both output channels so now the oscillator don't forget all of these oscillators are running all the time that oscillator is constantly active so the moment I connect it to the two output channels it's now applying its modulation, its control voltage modulation to the outputs. What's that going to sound like? And you can see on the oscilloscope, we're getting the volume variance on both of those channels. So if we now speed this up, we're going to get a pseudo kind of tremolo effect. We've still got the weird stereo thing. I'll leave it. Why not? Now, did you hear as I play higher notes, the uh, the LFO is cycling faster? That's because um, I've inadvertently, this is a mistake, left the keyboard mapped into oscillator frequency, oscillator three's frequency. So the keyboard is applying a control voltage to the oscillator. I actually want this to run in pure LFO mode. So I'm gonna disconnect the keyboard from oscillator number three and now the tremolo will be consistent across the entire keyboard range. Make it a bit faster. I'm going to pull the level back. Now there's two different ways I can do this. I can reduce the level coming out of the oscillator or I could apply attenuation pins to the control voltages. We'll do it from the level knob. Now, in addition to having the dedicated filter oscillator, the output channels have their own filters on them uh, as well. And to, to demonstrate this, I'm just going to go back to simple unfiltered sound. Now, the output filters are a combination of both high pass and low pass filter. It's really easy to demonstrate with Insight down below. So if I play a note and increase the filter, can you see it attenuating or reducing the uh, low the low frequency um, harmonics? Basically, applying a high pass filter. And as I go past twelve o'clock, it turns into a low pass filter. 
And now... Really interesting filter. Don't take for granted that these are here. That's a, a great little addition to the, to the filter oscillator bank. Now, in order to demonstrate the last uh, output feature that I want to talk about today, I've taken the, the matrix right back to basically nothing. In fact, let's just get rid of everything. We're going to talk about output feedback loops. Now, you may recall in episode one, uh, I gave you a health warning not to do this without being very, very careful. And I really mean it. You can do some serious damage to your ears messing with um, synthesizer feedback because if you connect one of those pins suddenly you could just end up with this absolute wall of sound in your ears if i plug this in right now you do not want that in your head without some kind of control it's very nasty indeed and i've got a brick wall limiter on this so there's no way it can hurt hurt me and even still I'd turn the volume down because it's kind of, you feel a little bit like um, Will Ferrell and Elf opening the Jack in the Box. You're just expecting it to hurt you. The way to demonstrate, uh, the best way I think to demonstrate um, feedback is with attenuation pins. If I put a, a 0.25 pin on this, basically that means that most of the signal, most of the feedback signal is being suppressed. And so we're still getting feedback but now it's under some kind of control. And when I say control, as much as you can ever control feedback. Firstly, that's what we've got so far, with this kind of throbbing hum. The synthesizer's doing that all on its own when we've got absolutely nothing connected. Now let's start having a bit of a play with our output filters and see if we can get any interesting sounds. <laughs> I am quite trepidatious because when it breaks, it breaks quite violently. You can see that it's not a naturally shaped wave. buckling under the pressure. See the wave kind of... <laughs> and then it popped. <laughs> oh, it gets me every time. Swine. become quite interesting is when we plug uh, control voltages into them. So I'm going to plug the trapezoid output from the envelope shaper in and suddenly now I've got this re-triggering and we can generate some quite interesting effects. Here's my output filter. Again, it's on the verge of on the verge of collapse. Lost it again. Lost it again. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. can get it to the stage occasionally where it's feeding back and you can control the pitch of the feedback. But it doesn't want to play today. Oh, there we go. Got it. I lost it again. <laughs> 
Isn't it just the greatest joy? The greatest joy with like huge health warnings on. Please be careful. It, it, it is violent. We'll see when we come to deal with one of the uh, the later advanced modules, when we get into dealing with groups, that you can control uh, these attenuation levels down to the thousandth of units rather than 25% at a time. And we can then actually start making more musical use of this feedback. It's a little bit of a blunt weapon, a bit like a painting with a crayon uh, using these attenuation pins, but at least it demonstrates the effect. So that's the output bank dealt with. And that's actually all of the primary controls of the main synth. Next episode, we'll go on to deal with the, uh, the original keyboard synthesizer and see what it can do. Thanks very much for watching. Hope to see you then.